you obviously can't come out this way. Yeah. It's under the chair, too. Yeah. Yes, that would be it. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, that would be the preferred walk. Thank you. Guys, I recommend you speaking up like Mr. Tim did because this room seems to echo. You guys know. I'll give Maximum points to the developers. Player! Yeah, it's Sorry, like I'm talking about you. <laughs> 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 Do you have a lot of Do it for a moment. Yeah, it's really Constitutional due process protects against citizens must equalize procedural safeguards to the right to exclude evidence, avoid self incrimination, and receive a public trial for all within its jurisdiction. It takes counter plans and counter advocacies that only change the minority of due process protection to negate the negative defense changing the majority of rights. Since the Constitution lets defendants waive safeguards like jury trials and self representation, I confirm that position specific to a few rights, further negating only by limiting a few protections and I have reciprocity. Since he only has to change a few rights while I have to defend all of the reciprocity, the fairness is ensures both debaters to equalize the ballot. Further, since the opposite of same is different, the negative defense treating non citizen suspects differently from citizen suspects. Differentiating treatment for all certain suspects doesn't negate, since that gives both citizens and non the same protections. Thus, he must justify distinguishing procedural protection based on nationality alone, as the resolution uses all this distinction must be morally relevant, not based on legality or practicality. Since the resolution questions governmental conduct, I value moral state action, defines policy making that respects people's intrinsic worth. Lori Calhoun writes. To adopt a moral perspective towards other persons and peoples requires regarding them as having intrinsic value and moral worth equivalent to one's own. Because morality is strive centered to persons, policies that ignore this essential quality cannot with linguistic propriety be described as genuinely moral positive. When the essential value of conscious and central person is as flatly denied, the policies in question are prioritized non-moral interests. 
Protecting intrinsic worth means refraining from opposing a singular conception of existence or what it means to be worthy as that denies the source of human value. Stephen Crowell writes, Value cannot be grounded in being itself, since it would thereby lose its character as an ought, and it cannot be revealed only to an act of freedom which exists as a value by recognizing it as such. Ought to go to work, might not be irresponsible, just take up a life of crime. It can only be because I have chosen myself as a responsible person. From within that choice, there is the answer of what I ought to do, but, but outside that choice, there is none, for it is only because some choice has been made that anything can make a compelling claim on me. As all people are due, open space to pursue their own lives free from arbitrary interference, states can't favor specific ideologies or groups. Thus, the standard is preserving moral neutrality. Preserving moral neutrality means recognizing that all people have a claim to pursue the good. The standard is binary. Either the state has no judgment on individual subgroups or privileges some at others' expense, the standard has a clear right line so long as I promote open space for action without impeding on others to be a part. My thesis and sole contention is that all humans' worth is intrinsic, not instrumental by extending procedural rights regardless of nationality, affirming rejects citizenship as a determinant of worth, preserving moral neutrality in three ways. First, by letting non-citizens defend themselves against the state the same way citizens can, affirming treats both groups as equal and worth upholding neutrality. Due process protections are a type of insurance against arbitrary violations. Margaret Raiden writes, Due process is part of the broader norm of evaluation of risk of error that pervades criminal adjudication. First, there are possible factual errors, e.g., did the defendant pull the trigger, or was it someone else? Rules regarding the requisite burden of persuasion, like beyond reasonable doubt, stand in response to this type of risk, and the context of punishment, moral error occurs when too much blame is ascribed to a particular defendant. She furthers. Subjecting an individual to the risk of unjustified punishment constitutes disrespect and shows a lack of concern for her future. In addition to lack of concern for present justice, it also shows arrogance towards the individual and arrogation of power characterized by behaving as if one's decisions were infallible when one knows they are. In contrast, universalizing U.S. due process rights recognizes that citizens do not share a fundamental interest in protection. David Cole notes. If the state can't take a citizen's life, liberty, or property without due process of law, why should it be able to take a non citizen's life, liberty, or property without due process? It's just enough an imposition on foreign nationals' physical freedom to be locked up as, as a, on the citizens. The interest in life, liberty, and property don't usually vary depending on nationality. Similarly, the significance of the government's interest shouldn't generally turn on the citizen non citizen distinction. National security is equally threatened by exposure of confidential information in a criminal case involving a citizen or a foreign national. Just as people are likely to purchase insurance for property of high value, like a house or a car, people need the insurance of procedural protection against state injustice since their liberty is their most important asset. Making due process rights available only to citizens sends a message that the state doesn't need to invest in non citizen protection because it's not as valuable, violating moral neutrality. Second, Equalizing due process preserves human status as intrinsic, non instrumental preserving neutrality. Denying non citizens procedural rights for security reasons uses one group to benefit another. Connor Geerty confirms. Freedom is only unsatisfactory if you would experience it as precarious. The ease with which freedom is taken away is something that suspected terrorists or foreigners suffer because they are not like you, their vulnerability is not registered. He furthers. The U.S. promotes a sense of liberty among the majority while destroying it for those suspected of subversive work almost no American citizens are indefinitely detained for minor offenses or find themselves brought before military tribunals and great charges carrying the death penalty. Most of us pay almost nothing in personal freedom, but such measures are used against terrorism suspects. Liberty applies to the great number of Americans who feel that this freedom is being challenged by outsiders. Yet this system shows rights as benefits, not entitlements. We send rights because people deserve them, not based on whether they help others. Stanley Benn argues. A right is a formal principle of procedure and rational moral argument rather than a right to do anything specifically places the onus on justifying interference, not showing our bunch of people, let alone if one denied a man this right, it would be open to others to use them like their beasts and their tools for their own purposes as they chose without being called upon to show by what right they did so. To recognize a man as a moral person is to recognize that he has interests and not merely functions. Emmanuel Gross furthers. The desire for efficiency and deterrence is likely to cause society to deviate from the constitutional safeguards that protect the accused. The result is society to use the person as an instrument for security, the creation of a special judicial form that enables a conviction on the basis of evidence kept secret for the reason that national security severely violates procedural rights. Any change of procedure based on potential benefits others commit this harm, thus independent of the benefits that may result from restricting non citizen procedural rights, moral neutrality demands equal treatment. Third. Extending due process helps deconstruct the citizen non citizen dichotomy that undermines neutrality. Since people can't control the lottery of birth, facing rights and citizenship is arbitrary. I allow Shakar Reliance on the absence of birth as a basis for assigning political membership represents a blind spot in contemporary citizenship theory. The assumption that birth is somehow a national and apolitical event. By legally identifying it as a decisive fact in the distribution of the lifelong good of membership, we make citizenship the quintessential inherent entitlement of our time. Indeed, states' characterization of people into citizen and non citizen groups artificially privileges some over others. Sela Ben Hobby contends. Particularistic identities and nationality by virtue of which one is said to belong to some people are served with increasing ferocity because sovereignty means the right of the collectivity to define itself by asserting power over bounding territory and create distinctions between us and them, those who belong to the sovereign people and those who do not. She furthers. In a democratic quality, sovereignty must always be constrained by human rights, which individuals are entitled to not by virtue of being citizens, but because they are human. Universal rights transcend the rights of all citizens and extend to all moral beings. <coughs> Now, as regards to the substance of due process rights with potential effects of extending them, then using citizenship to justify a different treatment violates moral neutrality. I have things to work on. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good? Yeah. Okay. What is your advocacy? How would you treat non citizens who 
I mean, if you want me to defend, like, no, article, I want you to specify. What you I'll mean. defend Article Three federal courts and due process. Okay, good. let's talk about what constitutes uh, part of your advocacy, right? Do you ban things like targeted killing, for example? Do you ban other violations of due process, or is that not relevant? The AC doesn't speak to things like indefinite detention and targeted killing. So, like, I'll accept what you think is the topical interpretation. Okay, so will you accept that you ban targeted killing? That I ban targeted killing? Yeah. Sure. Okay, great. Let's talk about how we weigh arguments under your standard. So, how do we know whether we are respecting someone equally? And do we weigh arguments? Because it seems to me like your rhetoric under your standard is moral neutrality, so okay. if we treat them both we can make, how do we compare? We can make arguments for why it's a bigger violation of, a conce of like allowing someone to pursue their conceptual good. For example, if you like torture me, that's a worse violation of my, my ability to pursue my own ends, as opposed to you like flicking me on the ear. Okay, so at what point do these harms become relevant? So are impacts relevant at all? I would say like impacts to pursuing the conception of the good are relevant, but not like okay. generic extinction impacts, if that's what you're saying. So like people can pursue the good, but like extinction doesn't matter? My argument is it that we don't restrict rights based off potential benefits to restrict them. So it's not an ends-based standard, okay. but that's what you're so asking. how do I know whether like a particular counter plan or counter advocacy depends on the majority of rights? Like it seems to be like the status quo would have a majority of rights, like military commissions have a majority. No, they have indefinite detention. That's like they one have, right. They're almost the same in all other respects. No, like they right have to counsel, severely speed low. trial, habeas corpus, like okay, torture. Habeas, habeas corpus has been contested. Torture often happens. Like, how do I know there's something in the majority of rights? Like, you can make arguments for why here are the due process rights and why you achieve the majority. But if the counter plan gains offense off of one, two, like three specific rights, then it would harm the violation, okay. cause the violation. Let's talk about uh, the argument about morally relevant distinctions. This is just right under the fixed argument. What is the non-citizen citizen spike? The, that would take out anything just linking to terrorism without being specific to non-citizens. So like, if you read a dissad- Why would that, I take that out? Wouldn't that be a shift in your interpretation? No, the argument's very clear from the interpretation in the EC that if you justify restricting citizens and non-citizens due process, it's still the same treatment, so it's still a part. Oh, so you can affirm either by proving the same treatment? I won't, gain, I won't gain offense by saying that uh, we should give them no due process, but if you do it, that's why it doesn't, that's why it's a part. So like, the AC won't shift advocacy automatically, only if you run the specific argument that's not specific to a morally relevant distinction. Okay, sounds good.
and safety issues. Is everything on your computer? Uh, no, so theory is on here and then the other side. Pakistan major cities 
pursues that bar seven has exactly revenge against their institutional tools, military intelligence facilities, the majority wins some of the early battles in the Northern Zone, resulting in a campaign. They, uh, then the military have the hands pulled with Pakistan and South and North Missouri, taking terrorist back, which could destroy the international election, setting up confrontation between military and opposition politicians, then manipulation by the army, Pakistan's internal stability matters, specific large and growing, nuclear arsenal, trench chairs, and extra sense of influence, breakdown of democratic process, setback, process, source stability of the long run term military rule, due to pressure little to improve governments, the effect is extinction. Pit. As it's heard to Calvin, now Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan and American officials sit there with 15% of our vulnerability, Pakistan collapses, America loses the foot race to secure the development of the event of the worst case scenario, Pakistan and military attempts to succeed, toppling the government, nuclear armed nuclear could be galvanized the military action, could nuclear arm China rush the army, uh, these dudes falling into the hands of terrorist organizations, place the entire world in collision with this. Also, please with the AC framework because you cannot pursue the good of your death, it doesn't make any sense for you to make arbitrary distinctions between the fact that you pursue your not all of this is a morally relevant distinction because the death is a morally relevant distinction because if you have 10 people on an island, one person on an island, then it, is, it might be arbitrary that they are on that position, but it is still morally relevant. So his moral relevance are on the AC, just better the question of what you're using in terms of the framework, than the app. First, on the argument about, uh, I need to fix arguments, I'm just setting status quo military commissions. Then on the argument about non citizens and citizens, uh, a, ought being a legal obligation means that it is not uh, in terms of morality, which means I don't have to just talk about prohibitions about citizens and non-citizens. The, the, the theory answers the argument about citizens and non-citizens distinction. Also, the death is a morally relevant distinction because argument just begs the question of what framework you use. Under you till everyone is equal, but there can still be morally relevant distinction because of the outcomes of the action. So if everyone dies, that's morally relevant. Then go to the standard. One, there's no ground at which point we have moral neutrality. If the government is always has to be morally neutral, then the standard is contradictory because we always have some sort of degree of uh, not, not failing if the standard is compared to which means it's collapsed to two alternatives, but general harm should also apply as an overview of contention. Non unique federal courts now resemble military commissions wait till 2011. The pressure from big terrorists had taken its toll in the federal courts, which resemble military tribunal system that was once defined by how it distinct was in the art of the thesis of past decades. The federal courts power heavily. Circuits got federal prisons approximately in definite detention and shot up the thesis. Again, the federal military commissions needs to develop to the position of the largest spheres between the tribunal and the criminal spheres of the person's favor of the federal judicial system. No, not how much is the most important protections are the same in military tribunals federal courts wait till. Upon closer examination, I've just come troubling close to those these military tribunals that are acting around departments waiting for the government's interest, the government's unwillingness to disclose the culture information are all people into military commission rule that regulation, which means that there's very little difference between the actual and the negro, but there's still some difference between offering the same due process, non citizens, so in the same course to everyone create legal precedence, they wrote the rights of everyone else, McCarthy and Belshi. Forcing the criminal justice system to deal with non criminal problems, international terrorism, reduce the quality of justice, and the ordinary America. There's a corrosion of our justice system when you force the terror of terrorism into a round hole is not going to be able to start. It's difficult to make up the goals to run the middle citizens, you know, excuse the fact that they decide rather than supporting the overall growth system, national security imperatives. They are present simply after the most criminal case, and when we to our criminal justice, we have to cut corners and citizens also. Readily presume when judges often have to be achieved their ideas about the death penalty, see intense security, and rather than send of judicial participants. This impacts the actual due process for citizens, which is comparatively worse because we're decreasing the overall process for everybody, which also means that it's it, it, oh, it always comparatively worse because there's a marginal difference for citizens. It's that it is not an arbitrary distinction to have between citizens and non-citizens, because if you're hurting your citizens, it is not arbitrary for you to be able to treat those non-citizens differently. Also, go to his cards about the Jason card and the Ben card and the public group the rest of the cards in attention. These cards just assume that his framework is true, it just talks about how rights are entitlements, but my argument is that we shouldn't give them these rights because a lot of people would die, so he can't win the framework about like, how people are really important without answering back to my framework, so none of these arguments are sufficient to inform themselves. Okay. Let's, let's start with this theory argument. How do I violate your strategy if I told you exactly in Cossex what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it? How is that shifty at all? The shift is not that you're shifty in Cossex. The okay. shift is that you would shift your advocacy from the AC. Yeah, but like, I tell telling you, me you're being unfair is not a reason why you're But right. I tell you that it only applies if you run a certain argument. So if you sure. don't want to so why don't you just not run that argument? Because the argument is important to me being able to win the round. Like You need to run targeted killing to win the round. But it's just that like anything I run, you will like impact back to. It's not just targeted killing. Why can't you prove a morally relevant distinction between citizens and Nazis? It's not. That's not the point. My argument is that... I can do that, but you can shift out of the advocacy depending on what impact I have. So if my impact is terrorism, you can yeah. just say, okay, why, now why we'll just use that thing. Why can't just, you just make arguments for why non-citizens pose more of a risk to security, even under you? Okay. Danny, if yeah. I have a dissent for targeted killing, and the impact is terrorism, yeah. you'll just say, okay, now we'll target, use targeted killing for both citizens and non-citizens. So why, can't, why, why can't you read evidence for why you should uniquely use it on non-citizens? Uh, because that imposes an extra burden on me, and because you, it's a lot easier for you to make those arguments, because either you can win that targeted killing is bad, or you can win that targeted killing is good, in which case, in either way, you would affirm, because either we should use it for everyone, or you should okay. use it for no one. Okay. So there wouldn't be a distinction. Okay. So let's go to the end. The, let's go to the Waller argument. Okay. Why is public policy making always utilitarian? For example, we have public policy that respects side constraints like free speech. Well, 
there are side constraints, but the constitution exists where there are certain exceptions, right? So in the status quo, we have military commissions, right? We sometimes why, why national security. Yeah, but um, there's so evidence, a lot of it out there, that military commissions are unconstitutional. Right? Yeah, but the Supreme reason the government, to... that just proves that the government doesn't just act out of concerns for the constitution or other laws, it yeah. acts out of concerns for national security. Yeah, but we don't, so why way. do we only do utility? If, like, so we only do utils, that util is really important, and if there's a big impact to utils, then that outweighs. Right? So Waller talks about how you have to be able to justify your policies to other right. people. So if something causes a lot of harm, you can't justify it to someone else. Right. Like, the government can't be like, we're going to kill millions of people, and right. then say that that's publicly justifiable. Yeah. So let's go to the evidence in the dissent. Sure. Uh, the Zealand evidence and then the Johnson evidence. Sure. What are the internal warrants for why target killing? Like, what are you claiming? Sure. Uh, well, the targeted killing works. The second okay. study of Johnson says is an empirical analysis of all targeted killing cases in Pakistan, okay. conducted in 2012. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, by a professor at Stanford, he says that drone strikes are associated with a decrease per 100,000. So the argument percent. is just that drone strikes decrease terrorism, right? That's right. Okay, and then or the, they decrease the strength of militants. So okay. like, they're internal links to decreasing terrorism. Yeah. And then Marcy, Marky, or Marcy. Is ex it Marcy's part of the impact, Mar Mar right? Uh, well, it's an internal link to the impact of okay. that terrorism leads to instability, and then Mar the Well, Marky is a lot more specific than that. He says that we're on the brink because currently there are elections coming up, and there's a campaign in the North Waziristan to stop terrorism. But if you don't use targeted killing, it means the military could take over in a coup in the elections this year, which means that that will cause Pakistan instability. Okay. So if I turn the Zealand and Johnson evidence, does Marky still fund Marcy? I'm, I'm sorry. Well, so that's still fund So, like, if you turn, okay, then down to the blue coat that internal link. Okay.
what's the second what? Weidel card said? Uh, it says that there are few differences between military tribunals and the SAS court. Like, yeah. Both of them say the, say the same thing, but the second one specifies which rights are similar. Just all those. And it also, I mean, the first one talks about how there's almost virtually no difference in terms of application, especially the rights. Okay. Hit three left. So, the yeah, I mean, because if he proves the security argument, that's the reason for restricting everyone's due process. Off the straps to argument. One, I was very clear in crossings for what I was going to do. There's no straps to because he should have preempted this in the next week or made arguments for why the security threat specific to non citizens. That would, those would be easy ways of getting him out of the harm sector. And he violates my strategy because by his logic, he would justify, de justify getting citizens' rights. But the AC assumes that citizens get these rights and explains why we should treat them the same. So, if he justifies getting rid of everyone's due process rights, I lose the AC. Off the uh, then prefer my, my counter interpretation. Additionally, because one, it's consistent with the text of the resolution, which is extending the same due process rights. So, if he de justifies getting rid of citizens and not citizens due process, he's inconsistent with the text. Text controls the link to strategy issue and fairness because we base our strategies off the text and words of the resolution, and he's inconsistent with that. And second, he denies my ground because if I can prove a more disprove that there's no morally relevant distinction, if that no longer firms because he says get rid of due process for everyone, that gets rid of a lot of the arguments the AC claims. Ground include strategies because we form our strategy when we have specific grounds. So, on the fairness voter, vote for me if I win the counter trip because one, the next Spread the app on the anti theory requires huge time commitments because it's a game over issue. If he can force me to run theory and then kick it, he choose my strategy for making contingent on what he does. That gives him easier access to the ballot, denying fairness, and he denies reciprocity because if he, he, he can run theory to punish my elected abuse, I should be able to run an RPI to punish his abuse of theory. Otherwise, theory doesn't serve its purpose to check and use just a strategic tool for everyone to first reciprocity and fairness because it equalizes the burden gets giving both creators an equal chance of winning a trial. Uh, at the, 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 uh, off the NC. Off the argument that it's specific, I have to be specific to governments at the top. One, I'm specific to governments because the governments with that have to interact with the people. My framework's explaining how when we interact with anyone, we have to be consistent in moral neutrality and respect and such good. Second, I'm consistent with governments because governments often uphold notions of conception of the good, like free speech. That's frequently a government obligation, so I'm consistent with how it functions. So, group Ron Imer and Waller that we have to justify public policy, but that doesn't automatically mean we use utilitarianism. We often have side constraints in public policy, like free speech. We don't just default to a maximization of good. So we would never justify something like slavery, even if it benefited the economy, so directly takes it out. There's a higher moral principle off the act commission distinction argument. That would give states an infinite obligation because they would always have to act to stop terrorism, and they could never take specific, uh, they, they would always have to act because there's an infinite amount of things they couldn't do, so they can't ever take action. Off the uh, disact, off Zealand and Johnson. One turn to target killing versus terrorism by failing to view terrorist organizations as uh, bad because it has a lack of checks. Yell Stein runs. Targeting killing risk injury to people other than targets since the decision to assassinate is secretly without judicial process. Targeting is given not a chance to refute the allegation that the decision concerning the target could be based on mistaken information. For example, after killing Mohammed Abayad in 2002, Israeli security officials told the media his killing was a mistake and they had meant to kill someone else. Thus, he angers Middle Eastern stability because he, uh, and, and the terrorism because he just automatically kills the wrong person. Do you a check on it because it gets accurate convictions? Then, second turn, uh, targeting killing leads to more backlash than do cross air and man's rights. Killing of religious leaders or uh, rather than arresting them is more likely to search a deadly bias in the prison. Leader may be a source of authority that prevents a new leader from taking charge. In addition, some prison leaders hoping to gain comments here due to change of hearts and announce violence. So that prefer the analysis because it comes from someone who's been analyzing terrorists for the past 10 years, so it's more holistic. This is only from one year, so it's not a holistic assessment of terrorism. Off the AC. Extend the argument at the top that uh, advocacies that only change one or two, two process rights, not the majority, but deny reciprocity because we'll limit the few protection, we'll force me to defend all of them, he denies reciprocity, which is key to fairness, which is equal access to the ballot. This takes out the arguments in the cards on the AC, which said there are no functional due process distinctions. That is the clear violation. This is 100% conceded. Then, on the AC, I'm making arguments off the NC to use the AC framework. He's misunderstanding the AC, off the contention. It's not about what the rights themselves do, but the distinction between the rights citizens get and the rights non citizens get that cause the Extend then Abid, 
from the bottom that uh, national identities create us for some dichotomies, but rights transcend citizenship and apply to all humans, regardless of substance, due process rights, and potential effects of extending them, using citizenship to justify different treatment violates neutrality. So it doesn't matter what the rights themselves do, but the fact that he creates a distinction on borders creates this arbitrary us and dichotomy that precludes moral neutrality. Hey. I had one thing. Yeah. I see your RPI arguments. Yeah. And I also see the terms. Yeah. This. And then. How many, how many turns do you have on theory? What? How many turns do you have on theory? Okay. Uh, one turn off strats do and two counter standards with weighing done against. Okay. What's the second counter standard? The second one is ground because. So the first one is sexual. Yeah. Okay. Why he shouldn't have RBIs. 
One unfair incentives are guys incentivize unfair arms because the pages can't touch unique compared to massive targets in response to just made theory, which means that not having them makes us less of a world environment to change conceptually the round promoting unfair arguments is worse than having free will's theory because they're unfair by nature that free will's arguments have tenuous links to his unfair arguments given an advance in debate. So he is not winning an REI. He is just making our random arguments about I means, but there's no point at which you know when the REI should be triggered. So he's not winning the argument and winning clear often. So you should vote on theory. My second vote should, voting issue is on the NC. Let's go there. Let's first start at the bottom of the NC. Extend that the NC and the disadvantage links to the AC framework because the extension includes all these types of arguments. This is a cold concession in the last speech that when you are dead, you cannot have the ability to pursue your good, which means it links directly to the NC framework. He's going to try to get out of this by extending like moral neutrality arguments, and I have some words, but he just concedes that the disad links, which means that if I win the disad, regardless of whether I'm winning the NC framework, it's still a reason to vote negative. First, on the framework. Extend the act of mission distinction arguments. Government always face choice between the risks and prohibitions, which means that they can never be able to, they, can, they can always have to be held responsible for the choices that they make. His infinite, our, infinite obligations argument doesn't make any sense because I'm just saying that the government, when they're making a choice between the advocacy of using civilian courts and the advocacy of using military tribunals, they have, don't have infinite obligations. They just have to compare the two and they will always be held responsible for them. So it's just a comparison between the two different advocacies, not these infinite obligations. Also, this is just a defensive reason as to why they don't have an act of mission distinction. He has to really compare the arguments in the framework. Go to the disad. Extend the master evidence unique to start to killing is increasing now. The link evidence he can see is that the unique master started killing the internal links of the drone strikes, the packs, and the ability of militants to carry out operations. That's the cell and evidence. Then, 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 then extends Johnson evidence to start evidence. It's appeared to be my study based on open source reports. His evidence just, his first sign evidence just creates another internal link. Yeah, you know, creates another internal link without reading an impact. He just says we convict innocent people and that due process solves. But that doesn't link it to targeting killing, killing terrorists. Just because you have due process, you convict innocent people. That is just a separate internal link. It doesn't link it to like, Supporting militants. So he does not get an internal link to my impact with the first piece of evidence. The second piece of evidence is just about how there is backlash, but one, it is not specific to Pakistan. You should prefer my evidence on specificity. Also, you should prefer empirical evidence about the backlash. You should prefer empirical evidence because it checks analytical abuse. Third, you might have this much more recent in terms of Pakistan, which means it's specific to the situation in the campaign right now. So even if generally there would be backlash, it's still apparently more important to do the disad now because it would, it would solve the because it would solve the extinction epic, whereas backlash generally will always be this over one link because there is a lot of backlash. People hate us all, all around the world, whereas this is on brand. He's continuing all those arguments. So. Extend the on the link to the impact of the Pakistani platform. Our given on 9.3 is really excellent. You should call it out for that because it says that it encourages by militants like Taliban risk to take like the Pakistan. This is the reason he does not get an internal link to the sign evidence because the sign evidence just talks about a separate argument, which means that at the point where there are elections, the military could have a coup because of targeted killing non stopping the military. Now, that is the unique reason. That extends the impact of the extinction. It says that the uh, terror that the Pakistan collapses, then there will be loose nukes and extinction because of the extinction. He can see that impact. He can see that it links to the AC framework. It is the biggest impact in the round by far. And that you do not pursue good at all for dead. It includes any arguments on the AC. Go to the AC. His extension of the, of his extension of the uh, military commissions argument on the status quo, he said in context, I can defend military commissions. If I say military commissions have like almost the same rights, then he can't just like shift out of that interpretation and be like, now I violate. Also, he doesn't have an impact of fairness. He doesn't extend that argument. Then extending McCarthy turn on the interpretation that is actually apparently worse for everyone to have those judges. He concedes the McCarthy evidence. That is a turn directly to the AC. Then he extends my argument that all his arguments beg the question of the framework. So he is not winning the framework in the ground. He's done none of his evidence affirmed. So you should not vote in the act. Okay, I have 53 left, starting now. So it'll be theory spike on the AC, then the theory. Theory spike on the AC, okay. then the NC theory. Or his the neg theory. Okay. Okay. Everyone ready? 
Greeks and Axes would only change one or two due process rights and not the majority don't negate, and they deny reciprocity because by only limiting a few protections will force me to defend all of them, he denies reciprocity. I made the link to reciprocity and fairness off the RBI when I was making a reciprocity argument, and he said fairness was a voter. So this is the easiest place for firm. It's the first voting issue because the violation comes from the fact that he read parts off the AC that said military commissions gave the same due process rights. He said in CX I could let him defend military commissions, but he didn't violate the interpretation in CX. He violated it when he said that they gave the same due process rights and when he read that new evidence is around. That's what caused the violation. There's functionally no link to get this. So there's functionally no offense against this. So if I can win this, it is much clearer. If there's risk of, uh, if there's a mess on that theory shell, there's a much stronger abuse story coming from here. So on his shell. Extend the counterinterpretation that the negative proof that, that the app can prove that non citizen citizens don't deserve that deserve the same due process rights, assuming more unless he reads security arguments, which allow me to say they should both get less arguments. He says that extends a violation that it gives them a two to one advantage because I can either prove that they get more due process or less due process, it, and he can only negate by just defending that they both get a morally relevant distinction. The problem is that he's not doing enough work on the specific standards arguments. His biggest mistake is how he answered the textuality argument. Extend that he's not consistent with the text of the resolution because the resolution says same and he justifies giving. Them, uh, so that means that he has to justify different due process, whereas his advocacy was logically justified giving them the same. He says that it's just a necessary but insufficient burden. But it is a necessary but insufficient burden for him to win theory. I extend that textuality precludes all arguments because we get them from the base ground. Even if textuality isn't what they're all there is to fairness, it's still a necessary constraint of what is fair. If he's not consistent with the text of the resolution, he's automatically unfair. That precludes all of the arguments. There's no way against this. So that is very clear weighing analysis because it, he doesn't actually answer the tax argument on the strategy argument. Extend the first response that I was very clear in process that if he ran a morally relevant distinction, I would give them the same. If he ran a security argument, then I would say they didn't get the same. He says that it's still abusive and that it still denies the key ground. But the problem is that the neg has flexibility. I told him in process why to do. He can run arguments where he still gets ground. So this severely mitigates the abuse coming from the strategy argument. So the arguments from the tax value argument and the ground argument I'm about to extend have much more weight. Prefer this way because it's actually sufficient to be linked into the standard. Rather than just these arguments in general, which can't actually answer anything. So on the counter stand, extend the ground argument. I lose ground from the AC because I can if I, because I say there's no morally relevant distinction. So if he runs arguments that treat people equally, even though there's a difference between them, that causes the harm. He does strategy weighing, but I'm actually doing ground specific to the arguments we were running. So extend ground is key to fairness, preclude strategy because we the debaters ask the ballot with arguments, so precluding that denies my ability to ask them. off the RBI. Extend the first reason to have, uh, have an RBI. Uh, extend the second reason that if he can run theory to punish my alleged abuse, I should be able to run an RBI to punish his abuse of theory. He says reasonability solves, but I should be able to punish theory that caused the harm. He says that these, this leads to more unfairness and to uh, harm problems. But first, paradigms can check for this because if people just bait theory, they often get bad speaks. And second, he can still win on. I think it's harder to win on theory if I'm baiting it because the arguments are much less intuitive if they're actually abusive. So the RBI still checks. Okay.